So you all wanted me to go to DragCon? <laughs> That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda. You're watching Swell Entertainment, and today we are talking about DragCon. <laughs> RuPaul's DragCon LA. I have to take off all my layers of glam. Goodness. This is another one of the events that I probably have, like, no real business being at. I went because you guys have been asking me to go for a while now. And it's at least the last two years, every time I try to go, it's usually too late or I miss it or it just doesn't work out with scheduling. So this year when you guys were like, okay, oh, please go to DragCon, I made sure to buy my tickets super early. So I bought my tickets in January when I bought a bunch of tickets for the year. I got an all-star weekend pass and the Thursday and Friday after hours events. So that brought me to 353.32 for my total. Okay, so um, also confession. I do not watch Drag Race. I know I'm a horrible bisexual. I just, it's one of those shows that I just kind of always was like, okay, it's on the list. And then I just, I don't know what it is. I've just never really gotten down to watching Drag Race. I don't know what it is. Certain competition shows I just really get into. And sometimes I'm just really not into competition shows. I don't know what the deal is. But I, I really love the art of drag. I don't really necessarily keep up with drag queens. It's more so on the secondary content market. That sounds so weird. But like I see a lot of like compilations and reactions and fan art, fan edits. I've always really liked the art of drag. I love the, the, talent and artistry that goes into it. Um, this entire event, I'm sure if someone got me, it was like a lot of like walking normally and then breaking my neck to make sure I saw the full outfit properly for some of the queens walking around. That's where I'm coming from with this. Should I have gone? Probably not. Especially when I go to events like this, I always try and spend money <laughs> at like the artist alley and booths and things like that because um, I don't know, I like to support artists at events like this and things like that. And also I know how much like table costs usually are for events. I did find out from someone that they already like got their, they, they broke even on like the cost basically already. So they're like, so yeah, if I go and spend money at the artist tables, like I'm not super in the red or whatever is what they were saying to me, which I thought was fun. So at the opening of the event itself, RuPaul said that he wasn't sure how many drag cons they have done. So drag debuted in 2015. Okay, so probably at least six, seven, right? Because we've, we've gap time in there because of the pandemic. So six or seven probably for LA. A lot of people were telling me, it's like, it's gonna be a lot for you. Like you're gonna be very overwhelmed. There's a lot, lot happening, a lot of colors, lots going on. For the most part, this is very much a meet and greet convention. There is 150 drag queens from 12 countries there, which that, that alone, that kind of like fact about it, I was really intrigued by. I was like, that's really cool to be able to meet that many um, performers in that context like this in one place is something that I always think is very valuable for fans. The only thing I can really compare this to is like Playlist Live or um, AVN Expo, honestly, because AVN Expo was also a lot of meet and greets, essentially photo ops with a lot of stars. I'm not trying to like make a comparison against drag and sex work and things like that. But like, that's just my point of like the style of convention about like, yes, there's booths and things like that. But also this is mainly to meet people that you like and admire and that you're fans of. They're milling around with you and things like that. So yeah, P Playlist Live as well. Yeah, Playlist Live was definitely a meet and greet convention. So I got All-Star Weekend. So that got me my All-Star Pass. It got me into the event an hour early. It got me this keychain. And I think a code or something. It got me some, they handed me something. I took a video clip, hold on, let me do my job. This was separate from the uh, lanyard, which is why I thought it was more than one thing, but it was this and the um, event. We got into it an hour early. And then also all of the queen booths as well had a separate VIP line that was much shorter. It's kind of like a fast pass line. However, it's my understanding that uh, some queens were charging for photos, obviously for signed photographs and things like that, but just to be able to take a photo with some of the queens, I believe you had to pay. A lot of them did not do that from what I can tell. And then also there was Thursday and Friday after hours. There are after hour events and shows that happen at DragCon. And I believe these are 18 and up, but I have to check that. And so I was like, okay, this will be good. I can review the full experience. So I spent $75 for total for a Thursday and Friday in, in total, not 75 for both days, but like, not 75 and 75, 75 in total. Okay, my wording is great. I'm doing so good. I was totally gonna go Thursday. I was gonna go to Friday. I was gonna go to both, okay. 
Um, the problem is, is that I actually got invited last minute to go to a show in New York and I'm crazy. So I went and I flew back Thursday morning purposefully. I was like, I'm not going to extend my trip in New York. I'm going to come back purposefully so I can go to the Thursday night thing for after hours. The problem is forget New York. That was not a big deal. I, I would have stayed up. I would have been fine. I would have pounded some Red Bull. I would have been fine. Okay. I would have gone through it. The problem was, is that the weekend prior to New York, I tweaked my ankle wrangling Hermes or something. That's the only thing that makes sense. But I had been having since it was fine. It was just bothering me from a certain angle. But then after New York and then after my flight back, my ankle was not only incredibly in pain, but it was swollen so bad. It was like, it was like a football under my sock. It was bad. And so I was like, if I go tonight, like the chances of me making it through Saturday are unlikely. So I had to decide to miss Thursday so that I could stay home and elevate and ice my foot. And the swelling did go down. And I did make it through all of DragCon itself for the most part. So I think that that was the right decision. And then I ended up missing Friday night just because I was exhausted and I had to get Hermes. You got my money though, I paid for it. So you got that. I mean, it's not like, I'm not gonna do a chargeback or anything, it's fine. So Friday, I got there literally like probably 10 minutes before 10. So this was at the LA Convention Center. And what the first thing I wanna note right up front is that the LA Convention Center, I've been to quite a few events here. This one was probably the one that I think utilized the space the best so far for the actual convention hall that I was, that they, convention, okay. convention hall that we were in. I think they utilized the space incredibly well as far as the distance between the booths, the aisles, the rows, all of that, the giant pink carpet down the center to the main wow stage. Very good. Wow. <laughs> My point is, is that the space was utilized very well because I've been in quite a few venues even recently this year alone, that have not utilized the space well at all. So I wanted to make a note of that. Parking was very weird because you enter on the parking lot as close as you can to the actual entrance and then it spits you out way far away. So I don't know what the deal was with parking, but it kept spitting me out like closer to the crypto arena than to the actual convention center. And I think that that's just the nature of convention center parking, but it was super weird. And that's not on drag con or anything like that. It's just something I wanted to know. Parking was trekking. Parking was a walk. So I'm walking up, people are walking up. It's it's not as busy as I would have thought for opening day, but a lot of people were already inside in line. So that makes sense. And um, someone was outside and I wish I, I never got the chance to talk to these people, but they were there the entire time. I think they wanted to sell this and they just took the opportunity because they were selling penis cups and like penis carvings of stones the entire time. Pink penis cups, giant pink penis cups. They were very nice from what I could see outside, but my guess is that they just didn't want to pay to like be inside the venue. So they were like, okay, we'll just take this opportunity and sell penis cups out here. Entrepreneurs, I respect that. <laughs> now I missed the fact that there was going to be like a uh, introduction walkout the entire time. I thought everyone was in line to like meet one of the queens or what have you, because quite a few queens who would be set up to take photos for the early crowd. Um, and But there was quite a few people for day one at least, which is understandable. I understand this for day one, for early access. There were quite a few people who were still setting up in this time, um, setting up their booths and setting up uh, just their, their setup in general. And so I was just kind of walking around. I really only made it through like part of the left side entrance and then some of the artist alley. I bought a crown like immediately. <laughs> it looks really pretty. Look at this. Like, excuse me? Plus I've seen her crowns on social media quite a bit. And then she made a TikTok about it. And I was in the TikTok cause she was like, oh, can I get a photo of this? Because she said this was the last one that she had of this style and she wanted to remember how to make it and uh, put my clip. And so I'm just awkwardly staring at the camera in the video clip and everyone's like, swell entertainment. Oh my God, I'm so excited for this review. And so <laughs> way to scare the hell out of this woman, by the way, I'm sure she's so freaked out because I'm just over there like, oh yeah, I'm gonna buy a crown, nice. And then you guys are like, swell entertainment's gonna do a review on this event. <laughs> I'm out here playing it cool. You guys are blowing up my spot. <laughs> there was a few people who recognized me at this event. Not a ton. Someone sought me out and gave me what? Uh, Aubrey? Aubrey? Uh, you said Aubrey or Autumn. Rainbow Boutique on Instagram and Etsy. And she gave me earrings and also um, drugs. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, she works for um, an, a, an edible company. <laughs> and so she hooked me up a little bit. Um, 
And then, um, yeah, so I met a couple of people, got photos with a couple of people. It was very sweet. The thing about events like this, and I always wonder, because I talk about, you know, me trying to integrate myself in um, spaces when I'm going to events and stuff so I can review them properly. And this is one of those events where it would have been better for me if I had worn brighter colors and like stood out more, like dressed a little flashier. Usually I try to dress plainly if I can, or at least blend in. And so with events like this, I don't know. I think I would have blended in more if I went a little flashier. Like walking around with the crown was one thing, but like walking around with this hat, I did buy this hat as well day one. Um, and then I just wore the crown yesterday. I did not wear the hat because the hat's surprisingly heavy. It's very pretty. I loved the rainbow. I wanted a good centerpiece for my gallery wall. Walking around with this, I got a lot of compliments. And also in the light, looks very pretty. Hello, m'lady. <laughs> Then there's like the walkout with all of the queens where they introduce all the queens. It was very cool, but I was not expecting it because I, I just didn't know going in that this is the thing that was going to be happening first. And so, like I said, I thought people were in line to like take a photo with one of the queens or to get merch or what have you, but they were lining up alongside the pink carpet down the center, um, which was sponsored by Cash App, I believe. In previous years, it's been sponsored by Pretty Little Thing. This is just the video of chaotic freeze frames, but I wanted to make a note about Pretty Little Thing because there were quite a few of the queen booths that had line dividers that actually said, Pretty Little Thing on them. So I thought Pretty Little Thing was just a sponsor for the event, but then I looked at the sponsor list and I don't think Pretty Little Thing was a sponsor this year. So I don't know if these were left over, but it was something I wanted to make a note of in case you see them in photos at all. So I got stuck on one side of the pink carpet. It was very hard to see at a certain point with the pink carpet, because if you were not right up front and you're 5'2 like me, it's impossible to see the queens once they leave the stage and go start walking through the pink carpet. Some beautiful looks, just remarkable looks. Again, I love the artistry. I just, God, I, there's certain designs and stuff where it's like, God, I never would have thought of that. You know, I, I, I love that. I love being around different types of creative people like that in different contexts, you know, cause it's like, honestly, I could have pulled, probably pulled up in my gold Furby dress that I created at the end of 2019 that I'm fairly certain triggered the events of 2020. And that probably would have made me fit in more, no joke. <laughs> there was just some beautiful artistry of so many of these outfits for these queens and stuff. And just even like attendees as well, were just dressed up to, you know, have fun and be involved or we're aspiring queens and things like that. And I just, I, I love that. I ended up walking around and continued to walk around a lot more. Something else that I really loved about DragCon was the different booths for all the queens. So it's my understanding they all got to decorate their own booth for their spots. Because obviously, like I said, this is a lot of a meet and greet convention. And so obviously if you do a meet and greet, you have to get a good photo. So rather than just having like plain backgrounds and stuff, they would totally deck out their queen booth. And so that was so cool to see all the different designs and how um, their personality translated into their booth and their outfits translated into their booth and all that. So I took a bunch of clips of those um, without the queens in them mainly because they also had signs around saying drag is not consent. So if you want to take a photo or a video of uh, the Queens to ask for permission and things like that. So because I wasn't going to take someone's spot in line to go and meet any of the drag Queens, I was like, okay, I'm just going to wait until like, cause people were moving or milling around quite a bit, walking around, getting food, things like that. So there was some people who were constantly in their booths and there were some people who were barely in their booths aside from scheduled times. They usually had like displayed, like they will be here at this time. So um, that's when I would get uh, the clips of their booths is when they weren't in them just to be respectful. Yet there's like creative teams behind a lot of these people, but a lot of them, it's just them, you know? And I just, that's so cool, so fun. I love that. Like always they had food inside the convention center. And then they had this one taco spot that was actually pretty good. They had protein bowls that was actually really good it was like 17 dollars after the fact but like honestly it was pretty filling the entire time almost the entire time okay rupaul was djing the entire time for the most part for the world of wonder stage i did not know this until after the fact like i because again i could not see the pink carpet so i did not hear rupaul's speech about like oh i'm gonna cut a ribbon we have 150 queens here all this stuff i found that information later but that's when rupaul said like i will be djing basically and so there are clips that i have of the stage because people were going up there and dancing the entire time certain queens would go and do actual performances up there but then for the most part it was a lot of attendees going up and dancing and doing lip sync battles and things like that which is very cool to see to see everyone getting involved and like having fun together and then rupaul's up there djing the entire time literally above the stage and i could not not see him for most of the like I have clips of him there and I did not even see that he was there I'm filming the stage and it's because he's not lit very well and so I think that that's another thing that I think would have like I get you've made it a big deal that like a oh, RuPaul is DJing the entire time but I think that having good lighting on RuPaul would be a good idea like that's sparkle lighting something 
I don't know, so that we can see you because you're just kind of in shadow almost, like you're not lit whatsoever. So they had the World of Wonder stage and then off to the right side past way more booths and way more signings and stuff was the Bring Back My Girls stage where they would bring casts of certain seasons of Drag Race out to do like panels and take questions and things like that. Now, um, like I said, I don't watch Drag Race, so I wasn't super familiar with these uh, different queens that were doing these seasons and things like that. But I would try and go and sit through and like hear their answers and stuff. And some great questions were asked and some really insightful answers were given. So that was really cool to see. And it, I don't know, it's just interesting to see a bunch of different personalities like this. Rag just kind of seems like one of those creative endeavors that brings a lot of different character and personality types together, brought together by a love of drag or a love of performing or what have you. But like, there's a lot of different personality types that can come out in that. And so seeing that, you know, exhibited on stage. I gotta admit, these panels did make me want to watch some seasons of Drag Race because I was like, oh, I gotta see what this looks like in a competition format. So there was some drama that happened during, I believe this was uh, Drag Race Australia season two, their panel. I believe that's what this one this was. Um, there was drama that happened and I missed it. Do you know why? I was there. I was standing there. Do you know what I was doing? I was filming the ASL sign language interpreter. I've become very aware of um, sign language interpreters at events and concerts and things like that because it's just something I, I've just become very like hyper-focused on, I guess, if that makes sense. It's just something that I'm clocking much more now versus probably previously I just never thought of. It's so interesting to me because I love seeing different interpreters and how they put their own personality into it, try to get the personality of the voice of the person that they are signing for. All the sign language interpreters for this, this stage in particular that I was seeing um, were so funny to watch because they were just bringing in the sass of everyone that was talking. And so I, the this one sign language interpreter was so good and was like just conveying the emotions so well with the signing that I had to film him and I was like filming him and I posted it on TikTok, I believe. In the background, I just totally tuned out the fact that there was like an argument happening basically on stage. So disrespectful. There you go, Pamari, you're just showing disrespect. That yet again, you are so, I, oh my God, fucking hell, you, you, you better wear, so disrespectful, so fucking disrespectful. Like talking about disrespectful, it's so disrespectful. It's my understanding that one of the queens up front was uh, kept being spoken over by one of the queens in the back. I do not remember names. I'm horrible. I'm sorry. That kept kind of happening. And then suddenly I'm like filming him. I'm like editing, I'm uploading the video. And I look up and three of the queens are gone from the stage. I'm really getting observance points here. I was like, oh my God, what did they walk off? They walked off. And then I, now I had to stay here because I needed to see how they would go about this. And the other queens kept talking. I don't know if I didn't catch if they like addressed this or not, but then sure enough, the three, uh, one of the queens did move to fill in the gap for the, because two of the seats were on the front and then one of the seats were back at the end. And so one of them moved forward to take over those two seats and kind of like lounge out in front of them to like fill in the gap for photos and such. And they kept taking questions from the audience. And then the three walked back out. And uh, so the, the queen who had taken the seats was like, oh, <laughs> like got up and had to move. <laughs> oh God, I hope someone filmed the whole thing <laughs> because that was so funny. The moderator came up and hugged the queen who had been speaking originally and they were talking for a minute. And then she said, um, I want to speak and was just talking about the disrespect that she's experienced both on the show and since the show and how disrespect she's felt from people in her own town and the industry in her own town and all of that. And so it's clearly like, I don't know, it's, it's, I when how recently was RuPaul was Drag Race Australia? Because my understanding of what happened was that when you're in a competition show like this, it's kind of like the only way I can explain it for people who may not know is like women tell all for The Bachelor, you know, like for the audience, like we're seeing it as one thing, but then for the contestants, the tensions are still high. The emotions are still high, whether it was six months ago or now, because they're rewatching things and redealing with things. And I'm sure I'm assuming once you're around these people, like those feelings don't go away. And so it's kind of the same thing where you're in a competition mindset, whatever happens in that competition setting that kind of translates into real life. And then now you're supposed to go and do press with people. Oh, that, that probably sucks. So I think that's what it was. I think it was just a lot of like the um, the competition mindset kind of translating over and those feelings and uh, of animosity and hurt and disrespect and all of that. And so that kind of bubbled up on stage. Um, and so then all of a sudden it was over and I was like, oh, <laughs> I missed the drama. Walked around quite a bit more um, and I was just, I was really hungry and I didn't want to 
convention center food again. I had um, a, uh, what's it called, coffee cake from the, what's it called, that was just like really dry. It was not appealing. They also had food trucks in the back as well where they had the kids area and the Teletubby area. Now, before people get upset, um, I don't have an issue with drag story times. I don't. I don't care. And I think that, uh, you know, if you don't want to bring your children to drag story time, don't bring your children to drag story time. Okay? Okay. That's really it. I don't it. have an answer for that. Okay, fuck Is you. There something else I can't help with? Mind your own business. <laughs> <laughs> Nosy bitch. God, I need to disable her. Oh, I should also mention, um, there was quite a, like I said, there was the artist area and stuff, but they also had a lot of booths for like uh, sexual health, um, sexual wellness centers, um, different things for prep, trans rights booths and things like that. That was really good. Los Angeles Public Library had a whole setup, which I thought was great. They had the super cool thing. I posted a, a short that none of you liked, but that's fine. They have a cube. That's the short story box, okay? And you hit the button English or Spanish and it prints you out a short story. That's so fun. I love that. Especially for kids, like making a game out of reading. I think as someone with dyslexia, I would have loved that as a kid. Like, oh, if I finish this story, I get to hit the button again. Like that totally would have motivated me to read when I was a kid. So I, I love things like that. That's so cool. They had a spinny wheel. Spinny wheel is always popular at events. I always like that. The children's area as well, they had a, the Teletubbies were there at one point. I w did not get a photo with the Teletubbies, but the Teletubbies were there and they had a uh, drag story times of uh, two times a day, I believe, or one time a day. But the kids area was that and they had like uh, little duckies and places to color and just hang out for kids and stuff, which I thought was nice. There were quite a few booths as well that had uh, 18 and up signs on them. So to shop in those booths, you had to be 18 and up and they would card you basically in check. At one point inside one of the panels, I can't remember which one it was, but one of the queens mentioned like, drag has done so much for me. And it's like those people outside don't know what this has done for people in the inclusivity and how loving this community is and all this stuff. And I didn't cl click that at first because when I first got in day two, there was someone across the street with a megaphone yelling. Okay. But the only people that were outside that were like handing out uh, flyers and stuff were people that were trying to advocate for continuing to be able to have DragCon in LA, I believe. So I was like, okay, I'm like, did I miss something? Like these, these people work for the drag con, you know, like that's what I'm thinking. Then also outside past the children, this is what I was getting at, past the children's section, um, there was uh, food trucks outside as well with additional seating and an extra bar and things like that. The problem was with that is that I just didn't like any of the food that was out there. I don't know what it was. I just wasn't interested. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go and get lunch and then I'll like come back, you know, for the afternoon. And so I, as I was leaving to go get lunch, I walk out to, um, Anti LGBT QIA plus people screaming, screaming with their signs and their megaphones. One guy, I remember this one distinctly. It's like, you're gonna poop in his butt. Just horrific things. Children, why am I not surprised? He's hearing me about pooping in butts and like all this stuff, just horrific shit. And I made certain to get uh, clips of all of them just in case. Security reasons. But here's my thinking. From what I can tell, they are not on public city property. They are on the convention center property. These anti-drag con protesters. And also at one point I walked up and was like, did you guys not get the memo that this started yesterday? Cause they were not out there the day before. They were out there that day. So I'm wondering if they just fucked up on the mailing list or something. The anti-fun police fucking messed up on the mailing list or something. I don't fucking know. But it's like, why are you guys here today? But if they are on the convention center property, if I'm involved in this event, I'm pit I would be pissed. And I was talking with my dad too, because my dad has done events like this not drag con, but he's done events at convention centers and things like that. If you have rented a venue and they are allowing protesters to be on property while your attendees and paying guests are there, what are you going to do? He's like, oh, I'm getting at least half the deposit back. Because again, you are, the convention center has the right to protect your attendees. They had barricades. So I guess you could argue that that was them protecting the attendees, but like, it looks like they're on fucking property. Get them across the street, get them fucking somewhere else. They literally have security guards blocking them. So people were going up there and yelling at them, talking to them. A couple of people were going out there in front of them, making out in front of them. I always respect that. That's always fun. If I was RuPaul and this was my event, I don't know, I'd be pissed if they are in fact on property, because again, that's like barrier or not, security people or not, like you're subjecting my attendees to deal with this shit you know, when they are coming to this venue for this event. And again, there's children there that they're yelling at and screaming at and all this shit. I ended up not going back after lunch um, because I, I needed to eat. And then it was just, traffic was a nightmare. And like, I saw people were very weird in LA yesterday on fucking the road. Someone just abandoned their car in the middle of the 101. Stopped working. I don't need this anymore. Just left it. I was also very overwhelmed and exhausted. My ankle was killing me. So gotta know your limits. All in all, 
very fun event. It's very overwhelming in that it's just a lot of sensory overload. The music is not everywhere, which I do think is nice. If the music was like blasting constantly, I would have had a, a meltdown, I think. But the music being in the main stage worked out well. And then also the panel stage being further down over worked out as well, I think, because it's just far enough where like the music, like you can hear it, but it's not like overwhelming when you're watching the panels. You know what I'm saying? Like you're, they faced it, it was done well for acoustics. Certain just little tweak things like the sign for general admission registration, lighting RuPaul for the DJ's space, lighting for the all-star weekend corner as well. I don't know why it was so dark in that corner. It was super dark. I don't even know if I got a full clip, but it's like pitch black almost in that corner with like some fun mood lighting, but that's it. I would say more to do, but like the whole point of this is to go and meet queens and get photos with queens. So I get why there's not like a lot of like other stuff to do. Like the there's, it's, it's spend money, Queen photos, <laughs> sit in panels. It's just kind of the nature of the event. So like to say that like, oh, there's not more to do, you know, is just kind of useless information because that's not the point of the event. You know, you're there to go and meet queens and things like that. But it's just, it's a lot of sensory overload as well because it's just a lot of people in certain spots and some of the booths, I mean, honestly, I think you could have made some of the booths a little bigger and still would have had a good enough space. Some of them were pretty cramped because you have full size costumes, full size frills, full size, you know, there's a lot happening in this, this venue for these different, like these costumes and these uh, shirts and designs and things like that. I just think you could have made some of the booths a little bigger and probably could have kept prices the same size, uh, the same for uh, cost of a booth. Even making them like a, a few inches bigger would have worked out, I think. I heard words of a speakeasy somewhere on the first floor. I don't know if that was real. I don't know if that was true. I think I just heard about it. I never found it. Okay, so confirmation. Um, official drag con after hours parties are 16 and up, not 18 and up. I would go again, definitely, but I definitely would wanna go with like a better understanding of, you know, queens <laughs> and no more queens because it was, there were just some people where it's just like, just absolutely fabulous people, you know? Like there's just some people where you're just like, just just starstruck just because they're just like magical looking people. They just seem wonderful and so, <laughs> <laughs> There's certain costumes and certain uh, booth designs that I'm just still thinking about, you know, like it's just in my mind. Have you ever been to DragCon? Have you been to drag cons other than uh, LA's DragCon? Do you also think that I need to start watching RuPaul's Drag Race? My friend was like, I will literally give you which seasons to watch. Like she has like a list apparently of like great seasons that she wants me to watch. So I may have to do that. <laughs> Would you like go to DragCon in the future? Was there anything that you noticed at your DragCon, this DragCon or other DragCons that you would make note of or like to change or just let me know, comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast, this Welsh Hands podcast. Reminder, I have merch. I'm sure I'll do, I probably shouldn't be here merch uh, for this one as well. Um, shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting my Patreon. If you also like support my Patreon, link is down below. Like, follow me on my social media. Love you all up here. And that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. Almost without fail, every time I go to an event that has an artist alley or like just a bunch of really cool booths, I end up spending like the equivalent or more of the ticket cost on stuff at these events. Thank you, Andrew, Allen, Awful, BJ, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Crispy, Crispy, Crash, China, Dirty One, Don, Elliot, Donnie, Evan, Eric, Eyal, Hopeless, Homer, Incognito, Isaiah, Joe, John M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Justin, Kim, Kristen, Lamb, Lexley, Louise, Mae West, Madeline, Matt, Matthew, Meme Lord, Michael, Michael J, Michael T, Micah, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Philip, Richard, Rob, Rosie, Red, Robert, Ross, Ryan, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Tosh, Timothy, Heavenly, Plastic, Tyler, Tenzin, Tom, Thomas, Querty, Wichter, Wendy, Will, William, Zendry's Wink.